Hey, what is going on guys? Donovan here. In today's video, I actually want to give a little overview of the wiring and um, the, I guess, the wiring process for installing the 392 intake manifold onto your 5.7 Hemi. So the wiring can be a little intimidating sometimes. Um, I went ahead and using a bunch of different resources online, this is the um, wiring schematic that I came up with. I got a lot of help from this guy named Preston RT. I just want to shout him out uh, just for the sake of it because he was very helpful um, with this process and answering all my questions which allows me to uh, pass on this information to you guys. Now one thing I didn't mention in my last video, the parts video, was this little circuit tap holder. You really want this, uh, that way you can tap into the accessory power fuse in your fuse box. I'm gonna go ahead and pin a comment on the other video to remind people to pick this up. I just got it at O'Reilly's for like six bucks, which is kind of expensive for what it is, but uh, it'll be very helpful. You can pause this video here to take a look at this wiring diagram, or um, I'm gonna also post this on like Google Drive or something so that people can just go download it and, and study it for themselves. But first, I want to start off with, I guess, not really nomenclature, but showing you guys uh, how this diagram is labeled. So as you can see here, um, there are lines one, two, three, and four in this little clip. The way I labeled it, the clip is facing upward. From left to right, the pins are one to four. I actually had to buy another one of these because I messed this one up. When you push in the wires, you can't really pull them out, I think. Um, either that or it's really difficult. And the center wire is actually a ground. And unfortunately, the purple wire is thinner than the orange wires. And for ground wires, you typically want short, stubby wires. Um, uh, that way it's more stable. I also want to point out that pin number four is unused in this. So you don't really have to push anything into that. Don't really worry about that. It makes your life a little bit easier. Moving on to the MSD box, so this is the machine that reads the RPM from your motor and basically sends a signal to the actuator to open or close the, wrong, the long runners. So I've seen a couple people mount the MSD box here. I'm probably going to do the same thing. I picked up some Velcro for it and I know this isn't a permanent solution but I'm just going to use it for the time being to get everything situated. So with regards to the wiring on the MSD box itself, I'll go ahead and set this here. So there are five wires that come out of this. The gray one we're not using, so that makes your life, I guess, 20% easier. As expected, the black wire is a ground. So I will probably end up grounding it either here uh, with these switches, or there are also some grounds in the back, back here. The yellow wire is actually going to go to pin number three on that little clip that I was showing you earlier. So when the red thing is facing upward, number three is the third from the left. The white wire is arguably the scariest wire to deal with because you basically have to splice into your injector wire, which is back here. And I know you can't really see it because of the lighting, but there are two plastic pieces that these two wires go into. One is red, one is green. So you're gonna wanna splice into the one with the green plastic which I believe on my motor is the back one, but you want to verify that for sure. And what that's going to do is that that's going to give the RPM reading to the MSD box. What I'm likely going to do is I'm just going to use a razor and kind of shave off the rubber until I get to uh, some of the exposed wire and I'll solder the white wire onto that and wrap it with electrical tape. So as you saw, I didn't mention the red wire just yet. We'll get onto that very soon. Uh, the next part is where it kind of gets a little bit interesting because you're implementing this thing called a circuit boss, which basically um, it's supposed to help with uh, easily attaching like accessory, electrical accessories to your car. Doing some research online, I've seen that there are probably ways to do this like whole 392 manifold without using the circuit boss. Really, I'm just using it because this is kind of the... Um, I guess orthodox way to go. Most people have done it this way, so I figured there's more documentation on it and it'll be easier for me to pass that information down to you guys since there are more resources available, blah, blah, blah. So first, with regards to mounting the circuit boss, um, there are two holes to mount. So the first one, as you can see, there's a little black wire with a little uh, like 
metal ring coming out. That's actually the ground for the circuit boss. So um, this side doesn't have a ground, so I'm thinking I will mount it here. I will mount it there, since there's a little bracket, and I'll run a wire from this side, from this side, all the way down to here, which is another little ground built into the car. The reason I'm using that bracket is because um, I don't really feel like drilling into the side of the car in the event that I ever want to return the thing to stock for whatever reason. Um, so I figured this way looks somewhat OEM since it's next to the fuse box and stuff and I'm not really worried about it falling off because I got lock washers and stuff with it. So for the most part we should be good to go. So back to the MSD box. This red wire is going to connect to the purple wire on the circuit boss. The blue wire to the circuit boss is going to go to pin 1 on the little clip. The red wire is going to go to the 12 volt power source which is here. Also, the yellow is unused, but I heard it's not a bad idea to leave this one intact and not cut it off. Um, just in case you add anything in the future that could possibly use the circuit boss so that way you don't um, have to buy another one or use some other method. Also I want to mention you probably shouldn't cut the gray wire off of the MSD box because it's unused. Um, tape it off, uh, tuck it somewhere hopefully um, just in case you ever need to use it again. The pink wire is where it gets kind of interesting on the circuit boss and there are a lot of conflicting uh, there are a lot of com conflicting comments on forum posts about how to go about this. So this is where this uh, circuit tapper comes into play. So basically what you want to do is you want to take that pink wire and tap into one of the accessory power uh, fuses in your fuse box. Now the problem is, is in the front fuse box it's a little harder to find out which one is accessory or switched power. The reason for doing this is that you don't want the MSD box running at all times and draining power from your battery. You only want the MSD box to run when the actual car is in uh, ACC or run mode. So basically you want to find a switch in your fuse box that uh, is switched power. And I've seen uh, someone on the forums has used Fuse 39, which is an AC clutch relay fuse. Now I'm not saying that's the fuse to use, I haven't verified this, but he says uh, he's had success with that one. And someone else told me that you can also try to use the, um, I think, power something powertrain uh, one. I Sorry, I don't really see it here. Um, so really, I'm just going to try out fuse 39 first and see if I have any success with that. So basically what I'll do is I'll remove, remove this fuse put in the fuse tapper, plug this fuse into the fuse tapper again, and then there will be a little spot for a wire, and that's where I'll somehow wiggle that pink wire from the circuit boss into here and connect it. So really, guys, that's about it. Um, I'm getting ready to get my hands dirty on this install, probably do the wiring today. I just figured I would give you guys a little overview on the process and the wiring diagrams. Once again, I will likely post that wiring schematic onto Google Drive or something and put a download link in the description. I'm still waiting on the actuator little motor thing from Summit Racing. It should be here tomorrow and unfortunately um, I don't really want to put on the 392 manifold until um, I have that actuator on because the actuator goes in the back and I feel like it's going to be a massive pain in the butt to install it um, with the intake already on. If you guys found this video helpful at all, please remember to click that subscribe button below if you're interested in uh, doing this manifold install yourself. I'm hoping that these videos are helpful and you guys can learn a thing or two from them to hopefully accomplish this uh, yourselves in the future here. Once again, if you have any questions, please ask them below. Um, I check comments pretty frequently, so I'll try to get back to you. If I don't respond, it's probably because the question has been answered already. I don't want to be a dick, but please read the other comments too. Anyways, remember to click that like button below and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.